nuclear energy. It's the final assault. Nuclear energy should tell each and every one of us that they have gone beyond the reasons of sanity, that they are no longer sane, that they no longer deal with the real natural world because they want to create a radioactivity, all right, that is going to make it impossible for the Mother Earth to take care of our life. We will not destroy the world. We are arrogant and we are stupid and we are foolish if we believe that we will destroy the world. Man has the ability to destroy all of the people's ability to live on the earth, but we do not have the power to destroy the earth. The earth will heal itself. The earth will purify itself of us. If it takes a billion years to get rid of the radiation, the earth will do it because the earth has that kind of a time. We do not. Our obligations and our loyalties have to be to the earth and they have to be to our sense of community and to our people and to our relations. Our obligations and our loyalty should not be to a government that will not take care of our needs. Our obligations and loyalty should not be to a government that has proven time and time again that it is the enemy of the people unless the people are rich in dollars. That has been the consistent history of Western civilization and the American corporate state government. That's reality. They are not our friends. They do not care for us. We have to face that reality that we have an enemy. We want to talk about nuclear war. Everybody's afraid of nuclear war that's going to come between the Americans and the Russians and the Chinese or whoever. But are they not waging nuclear war on us now when the miners die from cancer, from mining that uranium? Are they not waging nuclear war with Three Mile Island when they release that stuff into the air? Are they not waging nuclear war when they build all of these nuclear reactors and it's not safe? Are they not waging nuclear war when they attack the Indian people on their land, militarily attack the Indian people and racistly attack the Indian people so that they can get at the natural resources to feed their radioactive machine? That is war. And they are waging it against us. They bribe Congress. They bribe your elected officials. They terrorize and intimidate your elected officials by getting the FBI to blackmail them. Those are acts of war. We will have to come to a time in our lifetime, and it will come in our lifetime when we are going to have to deal with the fact that the enemy has taken over your government. The government is not your ally. The government will use you, chew you up, and spit you out. You think that we are wrong? You think that we are talking unrealistically? Then go look at your elders and see what has happened to your elders in your machine age society. See what kind of respect that they get. See what kind of a voice they are allowed into your society, what kind of input they have. See what their final reward of happiness is after working for this slave state for 30 or 40 years and allowing someone else to exploit their, their labors. What is racism? Racism is an act of war. Sexism is an act of war. It's a war against our human dignity and our rights to self-respect. This is the war that they wage there. War, they are warlike. And we have to understand that Amer the American corporate state got to where it's at through the act of war. The next war, you want to worry, you want to think about a war? The next war that you better be concerned about is the one that they're going to fight here, here in the continental United States. They have fought many wars here. They fought us all along, see, because we said it's ours and you haven't got a right to it, and they fought us. Now you all are claiming that it's yours under this illusionary concept of private ownership of property and they're going to fight you. But they're going to call it national security and energy crisis. They're going to call it constitutional rights and they're going to call it judicial proceedings. They're going to nationalize, you know, your military coup is going to come by, they're going to nationalize the police departments. That's your military coup in the name of violence, rising crime. But all we must do is look in the corporate office and see the rising crime that is taking place there and nobody's going to jail for it. So we got to understand that they are arming themselves to wage a war against us and it's gonna be called the, the war of law and order because they're twisting it around. For 500 years, my people have resisted. For 500 years, we will resist again if it becomes necessary. We want to be able to relate and communicate with all of the people that are living on this land. But we want to be able to relate and communicate from a position of truth. You all got to face the truth. We have had to face it through 500 years of genocide. We have had to face the truth. We have had to live the truth. We have had to die the truth. 
before we're going to ever see our evolutionary liberation, the people that call themselves Americans are going to have to face the truth also. They tell us to be realistic, that progress means all these things have to happen. They tell us that we can't go back to the old way. They tell us be realistic. But there is no old way, no new way. There is a way of life. We must live in balance with the earth. We must do it. We have no choice. If we allow ourselves to, to be apathetic, or we allow ourselves to be lied to or tolerate their lies about what they are doing to the earth, then we are betraying our intention. We are betraying our purpose here. We cannot protect that seventh generation if we do not protect the earth. We cannot protect ourselves if we do not protect the earth. The earth gives us life, not the American government. The earth gives us life, not the multinational corporate government. The earth gives us life. We need to have the earth. We must have it. Otherwise, our life will be no more. So we must resist what they do. They want to break our spirit. They will do everything and anything to break our spirit, our will to live. We must learn to resist. We must learn to see. We must learn to look. We must learn to step out of this reactionaryism. All of our lives, they've had control of us through their schools and through their TV, their electronic media. They've had control of us all of our lives. They have programmed us. They have made us become reactionary. We don't think, we react to what they do. We don't think, we react to everything that they do, we react to it. They're setting us up in the 80s because they know consistently throughout the past the people have always reacted to what they have, to, to their manipulations of circumstance. They know that the people always react. They're counting on it in the 80s. See, and they outnumber us with guns, they outnumber us with money, they outnumber us with votes. They control all the machines that count the votes. <laughs> they got it all stacked in their favor, except there's a key. <laughs> the key is we must start thinking and stop reacting. They have, the oppressor has no thinkers. They have no philosophers. It's all scientific. It's all economic. It's all manipulative. They have no thinkers. You go look and you deal with the enemy, and what the enemy does is you, the enemy will send somebody out on the street to hit you in the head, and the guy says, I'm only taking my orders. And if, you're, if you can come from a position of strength to this guy that's hitting you in the head and say, hey, you got to stop hitting me in the head, we want to talk, then he says, well, I have to go to my superior to see. They have no thinkers either. If we will start to think and we will learn to see, to see what reality really is, we will outnumber them through the thinking process. We will take our minds away from them because through their manipulation of our mind, they control our spirit. And they know this is true. They tell us, see, they want us to believe that we are powerless. They want us to believe that we are becoming overwhelmed, that they can overwhelm us.